8 o'clock, and we were hoping to have kind of wrapped up most by now, but sorry, I got wound up a little bit. Um, if you do need to go, feel free to. Um, I'm going to highlight a couple things that we want to change, and then we're going to walk through this. But also, if while I'm talking, if you could walk over and sign your name on here, because we'd like to know who is here tonight, so that we can mail or email to those who aren't here these guidelines. Okay, so we want to make sure that all of the greeters get down. Sure, yeah, Brenda has a meeting to go to. Um, Joe and Pam help do the training of folks who are signed up to be new hospita uh, ministers of hospitality. We had a handful who signed up in the, new spirit, uh, in the new stewardship renewal, and so I think we finally got those names to you. So we'll be... Okay. Mary, did she talk to you I think Mary time? was going to... Okay. So when people get trained, Joe and Pam help to do that, so I appreciate the work that they do. Um, a couple things that I want to highlight, um, and then I'll, some of this I'll let you read through on your own, I guess, but um, the beginning part talks about the ministry of hospitality, and it says there, you're the first point of contact for the communal celebration of the liturgy, and because of this, you should take special steps in being living representatives of our parish mission statement. And that's a statement that I proclaimed earlier. Um, for the procedures, let's walk through that. We ask you to please try to be at church a half an hour before Mass begins. If you're unable to do your scheduled night, please find a substitute from the roster of hospitality ministers. A suggestion, if you'll be away from home and find that you cannot make your scheduled Mass, it'd be helpful to have a roster sheet with you to assist in finding someone to call. And Cindy will email you a schedule and a roster, so you'll have updated rosters of those. We also place them over here in the North Sacristy. So you can always pick up from there a schedule and a roster. So if you know you're not going to be there, try to call a couple of people. Sometimes you know people and you'll trade with them. Um, or people are happy just to fill in for you too. I'm going to turn the page to the top of page two. Normally we have four people scheduled as hospitality ministers for each Mass. And sometimes... Um, and those four people, it would, those would be the adults, and then many of you have families that greet with you, and um, that's fantastic. So if you have children, if you can train your children, um, Kevin and Wendy Dotson just began being hospitality ministers, and their youngest girl is, how old is? Five? So they trained, they worked with her for a week, and she stood at the glass door here, and everybody who came in, Kevin pushed the door open, and the little girl stood there, held up a bulletin and said, welcome to St. Patrick's Church. So everybody who came in got greeted by a five-year-old. And they, as soon as they came in, you could, should have just seen them. They were melting, you know? They are just so happy to do that. Um, Sherry's family does that when her kids are there. So it's fun to see kids, and it's good to train them, um, to have them say, welcome to St. Patrick's Church. The four locations for the greeters are the main, south area, the west, and then the two on the north side of the church. Um, Decide among each other as to which greeting position you'll cover and then how you'd like to distribute the baskets. Also, decide who will select a couple or a family and ask them if they would like to bring up the gifts. So one thing that I'd encourage you to do is don't go to the same old standby. The, the, the family you always know will do it. Um, try to think of new people. It's good to have a couple, old couple, young couple. It's good to have a family. But it might also be good to have a group of friends. If you see five teenagers sitting together, ask them to do it. Or there might be a group of four widows and widowers kind of sitting in a group. Ask them to do it. Sometimes you'll ask somebody and they'll say, I'm a visitor, I don't know. And you can assure them and say, you're still welcome to do it, I'll show you how if you'd like. And there have been many times that visitors have done that. So you have to walk them in and walk them through it and show them how so that they know. So try to think of new people. Um, and I always try to think of the widowed, the separated, the divorced, the new people who just moved to our community, the young single people who don't know anybody. This might be a place to connect them a little bit. And it's a little harder because they don't know who they are. You have to kind of look around and see. But try to think of inviting someone new and see what happens. Any words with that? So that's one area. Um, if you notice down the first highlighted part I have, when people enter, we're going to ask you to please do not hand them a bulletin when they come in. 
So this, the tradition of this parish is people are going to get a bulletin and they like to read it. Some people come a half an hour early and like to spend that time reading the bulletin and praying. Great. Make sure there are bulletins in the holders and make sure you're not blocking it. So they can go get it if they want to. But when they come in, I would rather they be greeted. And some people like a handshake and some don't. Um, but the greeting should be everybody who comes in, at least you've turned your eyeballs on them. And a, a nice line is, welcome to St. Patrick's. That's a good start. And if you want to say more, say more. If you're a quiet person, I'd still like you to try to stand at the door and say, welcome to St. Patrick's. Um, and if you can, help open the door. And then it's good to look for, under that I have, attend to the needs of the disabled. Hold the door open, locating non-slope areas, places for wheelchairs and walkers. I think all of you know where our, our extra walkers and wheelchairs are. Um, some people need those, offer them to people. A lot don't know that we have those here. Um, and then, what, uh, one thing I ask you to do is, um, it's, it's common for many of you, when you see the priests start to go to the back, then you go in and join your family in your chair. And I'm going to ask you to sacrifice a little bit and try to stay at the door until Mass has begun and until the priest gets to the altar. Because you'd be surprised how many people come in from when the opening song begins and we get to the end of the glory. But at least if you've stayed, then we've greeted a few more people, and especially if it's a fuller church and they're stragglers, then you can help them to be welcome. So then that means if it's a full mass, how do you reserve your chair or your pew, place to sit? So some things that seem to work for some of you is to put your baskets there. So if you're going to pass the baskets, put them there. And we also have new signs. Kyra, would you go in the camera room and right by the baskets there's some signs that say reserved for hospitality ministers. So we made some signs that you can try to reserve God's pew that he's going to let you use during the Mass. <laughs> so they're just little signs like this that are on cardstock. Um, so if you need to do that so that Mass has begun, then you can kind of go into your place. And a good time to go in is if when the priest is at the altar, Everyone else is still standing, so it's okay for you to go in. You're not distracting anything. And the kind of a main thing is if everyone is sitting, that's a good time to stay on the side, wait till they stand, and then move to your place if you need to. So that's one thing that I'm asking, I guess, is to stay at your posts a little bit longer to try to greet a few more people. And to be attentive, um, there may be people coming this way, especially in the winter months, because those doors are going to be open to the parish hall. And there are some people who park on the other side of the Spiritual Life Center who will come in this way. Okay? Any questions or comments about that? Where are the wheelchairs and walkers? So the wheelchairs and walkers are down the hall and um, in the, the closet to the right, the coat closet on the right. Yeah, thank you. Okay. And, and if you do notice somebody um, really struggling, Go, go to them and say, we have a wheelchair, can I get it for you? And some people are very proud and won't, but some people, when I've said that to them, they're like, yes, please. And then if, you, if you're in a wheelchair, there are three main places in our church where they can be, and the two are right up front with a short pew, and then the third one is right here next to this short pew. And so you can put the wheelchair right on either side of that little pew there. Or I don't mind if the wheelchair is in the main aisle next to their family. Okay. Anything else about what works well or doesn't work well in the greeting process? Then the last thing that I'd like to tweak then is when the time comes for the collection after the petitions, um, we, some people start passing baskets right away, some people wait until all the kids are done, and um, sometimes we have lots of kids that take a long time so then when they're all done, the song is about done, and then you're just starting to pass the baskets. So a more uniform thing, what I'd ask you to do is, as soon as you see the children begin to bring up their offering, pause for a few moments, and I suggest you count to ten. Or pray in Our Father, a Hail Mary, and a Glory Be. One, two, three, four, five, count to ten. And then, by then you've seen the kids, then you can work your way up among them, bow, if you're in the front, 
and then go and begin passing the baskets, and then you're not going to run over the kids. People like to watch the kids, um, but I think you can be part of all of that. And it helps see that what you're doing is what they're doing, and what they're doing is what you're doing, which is gathering the offering. Okay? That sound all right? So that will move it along a little bit and try to be and try to be constant at that. So if you're working like this Sunday with somebody who's not here tonight, we're going to try to get this in their hands, probably not before Sunday, but um, you might have to help them learn these things too. That sound okay? Um, the last thing that I'll highlight on page three where it says concluding rights. So since we did not hand out bulletins when they came in, we're going to ask you to hand them out to people when they leave. Now some will have them already, which is okay, but we'd like to make sure that the hospitality ministers are at the doors when the Mass has ended, so bulletins can be offered to each person or family. So what we recommend is, once you have received communion, then you can proceed to your position at the door. And I know some of you might feel funny, like it looks like you're leaving early after communion, so just know you're ministering to those other people that are leaving early after communion. <laughs> so when you get to the door, you can have a bulletin there for them. And instead of saying, why are you leaving early? Um, I, if I see someone leave early, I'm assuming they are so excited about meeting the Lord Jesus, they cannot wait to go tell the world about him. So they're leaving early to get a head start on it. So that's what I'm assuming, and I ask you to assume the same thing too. So I'm not growling at him or wondering. For me, it is fun to stand at the doors sometimes, the back doors, because I'll stand there to greet people, and as soon as the last song ends or people coming back after communion, there'll be people who start walking, look up, and see me, and they'll just turn around. <laughs> and they'll just stand there, and it's like total guilt. And I just wanted to greet them and say, hi, thanks for coming to St. Pat's, and then they won't shake my hand. So be hospitable there, I guess. If they're leaving, just smile and hand them a ball to you. Thanks for coming. And I think I put a word there. Thank you for being at St. Patrick's today, or have a blessed day. Could be two things that you might say. Okay? Those are the main things that I want to tweak, I guess. Does that sound agreeable? Any other questions or comments? Joe and Pam, you're the gurus here, Dr. Um, I'd ask you to direct them to the priest. And that's hard because we're really busy. So what I say to people is, Father can help you, but not until after Mass. You're welcome to stay for Mass or come back then and talk to Father. Now, there are people I know who, a couple of you and other parishioners are incredibly generous. And there are people who walk the parking lot before Mass asking people for money. And if your heart moves you, trust that. But just know that word gets out and they'll come back and expect people to do the same thing too. So um, follow your heart. But the main thing I would say is direct them to talk to Father after Mass. And if they're before Mass, I'll often say, stay for Mass and I'll talk to you afterwards. And then normally I don't see them. Um, not that I don't want to see them, but I want them to be at Mass, I guess. That sound okay? And that's a good thing too, if you see somebody that makes you nervous, trust that instinct, and alert other people. And that happens here once in a while. We've had inebriated people or people who appear to be um, some kind of a narcotic or um, just mental illnesses in much of the transient population. And so just alert the other greeters um, so that they know. Um, and, and alerting doesn't mean you embarrass them or kick them out. It just means you're going to watch them. And then once in a while there'll be a time when they'll need help being escorted out or something. But just be alerting to others, I guess. What else happens? What else do you think about? When, 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 when a couple of weekends ago, I went back, and one of the guys, when someone came up to me and says, well, is there reconciliation? I'm like, well, can I go out and sleep in the The door's closed. Ten after just five, okay. well, there's nobody in there, so I can set him up in there. Then all of a sudden, I see somebody walk in the door. And he didn't know more than halfway up, and then the person who was standing there walked right in. But at, at ten after, you don't have much time left either, so I was torn both ways. <laughs>
And, and especially before Christmas and Lent, it's common that I'm in there until 520. So when there's two priests here, it's helpful. Uh, for the next month, I'm, I'm a little concerned what that's going to look like because I know I'll be there until later. So I'm happy to stay until 529 on Saturday night if I need to to hear a confession. And then I'll trust that everybody else is going to get set up for Mass like our sacristans. Um, and if they're not, then we'll just start Mass a little bit late. So, so I think it's good to, if they ask, check and see. And I've been in the confessional with the door closed when people have knocked and opened the door to see if we're in there. And then I'll say, just wait a minute, please. Or you can tell, you know, the Father's finished checking the sacristy. Yeah. Any other questions that come your way? Speaking as a sacristan, I we get kind of nervous when it's 529 and we don't have a priest. <laughs> <laughs> so look in the confessional or maybe the door bell directly. Like, especially mothers, can they still use their confessional like the bathroom? Yep. Yep. So nursing mothers are welcome to use the confessional or they're welcome to go into the parish hall or spiritual life center. And we have a number of mothers who nurse right here in these chairs, so they can kind of still be part of this, and some people are comfortable with that. It makes me nervous when I look out of my kitchen window. <laughs> There's a mother nursing below hands. But yeah, the confessional is still available for them. Do the masses get recorded if the TV's on, if the TV's not on? Does it not record the masses, or? Um, the camera is a security camera that records 24 hours a day, and it'll hold it on there for a number of months. But that's a good question. If you notice the TV's not on, and you're here, I'd like it on 30 minutes before, and then when Mass is ended, to turn it off. So how do you turn it on? It's plugged into the light bulb in this closet. So you open the door here, and turn on the light switch, so it turns on the light in the closet. And so you'll know that. And then if you've done that and notice that it didn't come on, then there is a little tiny power button here. And I don't like to use this because this one you can't quite tell if it's on or off. It's, you have to wait a while and see. So try to not touch that at all. But I do like that on before every Mass and during every Mass. And if, if the lights are very low in the church, that screen will be gray. It'll be tons of gray as opposed to as it is now, which is very cold. So don't panic, it just means that the lights are on. I, I have all our security cameras on my phone, and so I'll often turn on the church when all the lights are off, and it's an infrared so I can still see the room. Um, and it's a real great tone. It just helps us keep track of what goes on in there. But it's amazing how many families are out here during Mass with kids, and that is one way that they are connected. And that's another thing I'd say too is, if you're out here, and the final blessing is being given, what should you do? receive the final blessing. So if someone's coming, it's good to greet them, but make sure you're, I guess, participating in the Mass as best as you can. So that means you can be standing here watching and listening. You could have bulletins in your hand, and then when the final blessing is given, you can receive it, so you're modeling what they should be doing. Then, when the, openings, the closing song has begun, then you can go to your place. And I always think it's good to be by the doors if you need to open them, um, and if you're handing out bulletins anywhere, in the hallway, I guess. But especially those wood doors on the over here are, are heavy. Um, so I think those need help sometimes. What else happens? The last thing I'd say, I guess, is you're the hospitality ministers for the whole Mass, so you're kind of to keep your eye out for people in need. So if people show up late and they're confused, you help them. If someone gets sick, you should be one of the first ones to go provide help if you're in the area. If you see someone lost looking for a bathroom, you're the one who goes and directs them. Um, so that's part of your job. If you see something that's not right, then come and let me know. Not right during the Mass, but at some point. Or get help if you need it. But you're the hospitality person for that. Okay. Another question people ask is during the winter if there's snow. Um, oftentimes I'll put brooms and shovels by the doors. And if it's snowing during the Mass, um, if you're capable and want to clear a little bit, do that. But don't feel like you have to. Um, we're, we, we're trying not to throw salt on our new concrete out here, but we can on the rest of it now. Um, but just be, take extra care when there's ice and snow. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm 
Okay? I think I've held you long enough. So if you have any other questions when you read over this, let me know. And I really, really thank you for what you do. It would be fun to step this up even more. So there's a phrase, radical hospitality, which is exuberant hospitality. So how can we be exuberant in our hospitality? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.